Welcome to Richard Scale Modeling. This is part two of Trumpeter's DRB Class 52 locomotive. Scale is 135. In the first part, I just uh, done a quick introduction, uh, what was in the box and so forth. In this part, I'm going to be start building the model. Now, I should point out, um, as always, I've already pre um, sprayed these with undercoat, so it's all ready to go. So. I'm going to be concentrating on the base uh, for this next part. So let's jump into this and see how I get on. So I'm going to begin with uh, painting the ballast. Here I've got um, uh, three paints Humbro, but I'm going to be adding a fourth. But first of all, I'm starting off with Humbro 225 Middle Stone. And this is a matte colour. And I've just got my stipple brush and I'm just um, roughly going over all the uh, raised areas first of all. My next colour is 249 RLM 79 sand club and um, same technique with the stipple brush but this won't be a complete coverage this time um, so it's just a, a random pattern um, placing on the paint uh, where I feel comfortable with and my next colour is 70 brick red I, again um, same technique um, applying a little bit less on than the other two paints so the idea is just to build up uh, a pattern of color so it's not all too to this uh to same like um it, if you, you look at a gravel path or something like that there are various different colors and things like that in it so on to my last color and it rc416 pullman cream and um less again on on this um well say less again um when i'm doing this i'm just doing what looks right um you, you know that's all you can judge these things on how it feels to you does it look like a bit of gravel or ballast you know there's an argument it can be darker but um it all depends on how you you want it to be done there's no right and wrong way to do this i'm using 249 RLM 79 sand again uh, for the uh, sides of the base. This is just going to be an actual base coat. I'm now going on to Life's Colour LPW19 Wooden Deck Shadower and um, this is just going over the base coat. Um, you, you, you'll notice here I'm not putting any finesse into this. What this does is turns the your back base colour into a wood effect. So I need it to be a little bit grainy and um, uneven, hence why I'm just slapping it on for a better term. Um, and this will give me a wooden effect, like it's actually sitting on a, a wooden plinth. Going on to the sleepers, and it's Humbro 110 Natural Wood. Now there's various um, wood colours out here. The Humbro 110, I, I, I like the tone of this um, paint. The, the, the red black of colour one is too light for my uh, liking and, and it's um, it's a bit of silk, it's a sort of silk consistency which um, I just don't like for a wood colour. But as you can see the um, number one works out quite well. I'm now going on to the rails themselves and I'm using Mr Hobby's H18 Steel Metallic. This is only for the um, central part of the actual rail itself. Next I'm moving on to Tamiya's XF84 Dark Iron. And these are for um, the areas in between the sleepers and the uh, metalwork that holds the rails in position. And lastly I'm using Life Color LP18 Wood Deck Darkener. And uh, this just um, dirties up the wood and gives it a more grainy look as well so as you can see there's a, a massive range of colors just for this part and um, also a, a varied brain, a brand of paints being used as well don't be afraid to uh, mix your brands of paint don't physically mix them together but um, obviously you can uh, use them on, on your kit um, in various uh, ways you don't really have to necessarily stick to, to one brand to get the full best finish uh, while you're painting and the look of the model um, it's sometimes wise to do that because not every brand holds the exact colour you want 
and um, and if you are like me, you don't like mixing colours, it, it's a, a better solution. And I'm just putting a little bit of pledge, pledge clear polish on the sides here, just to protect the uh, paintwork uh, on the uh, edges of the base, because I will be moving the rest around and so forth, so I don't want to be chipping away the paint. The base goes together quite simply, there's a two location points uh, as you can see there and they just uh, clip in. There is one section that I have to cut off uh, per instructions uh, so uh, you, you have the even space in, uh, for the sleepers to go into. So next is for the sleepers to go in. Now I had a bit of a problem here. As you can see I'm fitting in the instructions, uh, the, the sleepers in from the bottom of the box. If I just pull up the instructions here, and as you can see, they state that they should go in from the bottom, like so. However, when I flip this around, you can see that they're almost flush with the ballast, and that's um, just not right. It doesn't look right at all. Um, the, the, the thing is uh, still a bit uh, wet, so I'll repair that later on, but they just don't look right. So uh, I put in a little bit of support to stop the framework from splitting, just a bit of uh, sprue there. But I'm going to have to take this uh, the slippers out and reposition them, I think. So I've taken them out and um, I I'm just going to get rid of some of these um, joining lines as well. They're, they're a bit too much. Um, so I'm just working out uh, how I'm going to put the slippers in. But first of all, as I said, um, I'm going to use a bit of sprue glue here just to fill in the areas where the joints are. And I'll just put a little bit uh, over the joints and let that um, harden up. And while I'm waiting for that to set, I'm using Revo Aquila 91 steel, and this is for the top of the rails. It's interesting that this steel colour is uh, a lot lighter than the Mr. Hobby colour. And once the filler's hardened, I'm just uh, filing it down. Uh, smoothly so I'm going to I'm starting off with uh, a rough file then gradually working down to uh, a fine file and now it's time to put in the rails uh, these rails went in beautifully uh, they just uh, slide in some stuck a little bit uh, exactly a little bit of pressure but the um, where they sit there's um, three little hooks that the rail runs inside of and I just pull it around and um, it ensures that the, the rail is level um, I have to keep in mind that the slippers will move uh, as I put a little bit of force into it but it's quite easy to uh, push them back into position and as you can see it's the same for the second one there so it's now to, time to place them in and I'm going to lay them on top um, like that and, and they still fit in quite nicely so um, I just think the instructions got it wrong because now that it's on top it looks a lot better and uh, to me it looks like our track should be and once the traps are in place and just placing on the connecting uh, plates or brackets that go in between the uh, trap joints i should point out also that i've repainted the base after the filling and sanding and um, obviously that, that had to be done as well but that was painted in the same manner as i described um, earlier in the video there's only one thing left to do on this part and that's uh, to put in a couple of bits of rail at the other end of this of it so I'll just flip it around uh, there and the reason why I done that was uh, I you have to cut these so I wanted to make sure I was all in position before I cut them and they're just simply snipped off at the end so if you haven't done so already why don't you check out the channel for my other bills if you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and you'll be updated with not only with this build, but um, any other builds that I've got going on. If you leave a comment, hit that like button, and of course don't forget to share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.